After escorting the Nixons to their helicopter, Vice President Gerald Ford silently walked back inside the White House and took the oath of office. So help me God. My fellow Americans, our long national nightmare is over. Number 38, Gerald Ford, Republican, 1974 to 1977, 61 years old, from Michigan. As Jerry Ford stepped into the White House, he walked into a house of turmoil. Ford faced the still pending criminal indictment of Nixon, an America which felt betrayed by Washington, and a Congress eager to reclaim power they felt had been usurped. If anyone had the ability to heal the nation after Nixon's resignation, it was Jerry Ford. He was open and honest, with a history of consensus building. A country sometimes has a magical ability of coming up with the right person for the time. And after Richard Nixon, you really needed a Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford was the most decent man I've known in the presidency. When he heard about the Nixon enemies list, he said, uh, any man who has to keep a list in order to remember his enemies has got too many enemies. Right away, Ford became frustrated with his inability to preside over the business of the nation. Are you saying, sir, that the option of a pardon for former President Nixon is still an option? He was spending upwards of half his time dealing with issues relating to Watergate. So I make the final decision. And he said at some point, you know, we've got to cut this off. I've got to govern. We've got to deal with inflation. We've got to deal with Vietnam. We've got to deal with the Soviets. We've got big issues out here. So I said, I'm going to cut it off. Boom, I'm going to pardon him. I, Gerald R. Ford, do grant a full, free, and absolute pardon unto Richard Nixon. He is correct that it would have consumed his presidency, but it was lack of consultation, lack of preparation, the lack of a sense that he had not built enough legitimacy himself to be able to make that determination. Compounding the fragile political situation, North Vietnam broke the peace accord and launched an offensive into South Vietnam. Ford requested military and economic aid to help the South Vietnamese, but Congress refused. Zilch. The Congress wouldn't give any more aid. They had had enough. The Congress, knowing nothing of the private commitments made between Kissinger and Nixon, to President Tu just pulled the plug on Vietnam and unleashed one of the great terrors of people seeking freedom. On April 19th, 1975, Saigon fell to the communists. There's certain things that will be seared in our collective memories about presidencies. The helicopter from the Saigon embassy is one of those. We were evacuating and people thought we would lose our credibility. People thought it would be the end of America's influence in the world. As much as Ford struggled to prevent that outcome, he didn't have the support of the nation behind him. Only with time has history been able to look back at Ford's presidency and see, without the emotion of Watergate, what he accomplished. I asked him what he wanted his legacy to be, and he said, what I really want is to leave my country better than I found it. And he did. In the 1976 election, Americans wanted to get Watergate and Vietnam behind them. And they would turn to a true Washington outsider as the next occupant of the White House. <laughs>